I see the opportunity for buried treasure. Swinging in there. These are pretty wide. I don't think you can miss them. Hmm. If there's treasure, it's buried. Just need one more big score. Then I can retire. Buy myself a cab over. Or a conventional. I don't know. 359. A model, something. Something cool. Maybe a super liner with a V8. Not a Mac guy. Boston Trucker here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Let's have a serious conversation. I got to get something off my chest. So I'm home yesterday by myself. I turn on the television. Now what I normally do, I like, I like a lot of um, mystery movies, dramas, a little bit of horror, some documentaries. I watched a good documentary yesterday, um, The Elephant Whisperer. It's really good. But most of the time, I go in the search bar and I type in trucking. It brings up trucking movies. It's usually the same movies that I've seen a hundred times. Convoy, White Line Fever, High Ballin', Smokey and the Bandit. Well, Smokey and the Bandit Part 3 was on the list. It usually isn't on the list. Now, I should have known better than to watch it. I've only probably seen it twice in my life. When it first came out in 1983, obviously, you know, I went to the movies. I was like 13 or 14. I might have watched it one other time. What a piece of garbage that movie was. Whole, I got through halfway. Now, the whole thing wasn't bad. Jackie Gleason... And his son, Junior, who used to play Tarzan, by the way, fun fact, forget his real name. They were fantastic, very funny, great, great lines, just like in Smoking the Bandit Part 1 and 2. Very, very funny. Big Enus and Little Enus, eh. The storyline for them was horrible. They just kept showing up. The Sheriff Buford T. Justice is in a race to get across the country with his fish on his car. Which is kind of funny, but somehow they kept getting ahead of him and trying to foil him. It was really, really, really stupid. And the other part that really irked me is, listen, I idolized Jerry Reed in Smoking the Bandit Part 1. All us truckers do. That's where he should have quit. You know. He was so annoying in Part 3, I, I forgot. He looked ridiculous with that mustache. This whole part where he's trying to pretend he's the bandit. I'm going to be the bandit. I'm going to be the bandit. Oh, my God. Shut up. Shut up. People are telling me to shut up right now, too. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. The only cool part of the movie was he was driving the best truck he ever drove in all the movies. Uh, maybe, you know, it's debatable whether the Kenworth in part one. He was driving a cool 359 with an awesome paint job. It was in the movie for two minutes. And the girl he picked up. The worst! Definitely no Sally Fields. Horrible. Annoying. Just, jeez. I got through halfway of the movie and I'm like, I, I gotta shut this piece of ass off. That's all. Sorry, I had to be serious for a second. I know you guys aren't used to me uh, being like that, but uh, just about getting loaded here. We're gonna head back home. Dump her out. Rick's about to make some screen loom. You might call it topsoil where you're from. Look at that beautiful loom. Over here at New England Truck Design. All right, I'll show you what I bought. 
the reason I had to stop here. I needed some California Custom Oxidizer. This is my old school secret from the 90s polishing step. You put some of this on your rag, on a separate rag. You wipe it down on your aluminum. Before it's even dry, go over it with a nice aluminum polish. Now, I used to use the California Custom Purple aluminum polish. They didn't have any. All they really had was this uh, Renegades red metal polish. I got some of that just because that's what they had and I'm out of polish. It's not my go-to polish, but it works because my aluminum is just not shiny enough. It's been bothering me, so I needed a bottle of this to last a while. I put it away and get back to work. Stop screwing around. Uh, we got me and Teddy this morning hauling off this job site. Teddy's going to haul out the concrete and mixed X. It's probably a couple loads of that at least. Then they got a big pile of unscreened loom over here. I'm going to start hauling that out. They're going to two different locations. I'm going to take the unscreened loom to our materials yard. Unscreened loom, you might call it topsoil where you're from. I don't know. It depends where you're from. Right here we call it loom. If you're new to the channel. I'll give you a little spelling lesson. L-O-A-M, loom. He will? I don't know. I just... just, just. Well, Teddy gets loaded. I'm doing some polishing. Got my oxidizer. Got my polish. I just hit the back. Hit this section. I'm making my way down. All right, two tanks, hand polished. First round. And we just finished getting loaded. Gotta have a system. Triggers a lot of memories. Last week, a couple people wrote where they're from. One guy was up in the the UP, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and that brought back a memory. I was loading beer. I used to haul beer sometimes for Bud Meyer. My dad used to haul beer for Falstaff. At upstate New York, used to haul kegs, I remember, back in the old days. I hauled beer out of Baldwinsville. I believe that was in Heiser Bush, New York. Used to haul beer out of Winston Salem, North Carolina. The thing with beer is beer and meat, chicken, meat, you sit. You, sometimes you can be sitting for a day waiting for your load, not getting paid. Beer was like that. Beer was sometimes you could be sitting for a whole day, and it'll take it takes them five minutes to load the trailer. They 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 can do two pallets at a time with these giant fork, forklifts. Anyways, I picked up a load of beer out of I think it was Winston Salem that area. Going up to the UP of Michigan. Started out in Traverse City, which is 
just south of the Mackinac Ridge on the west coast of uh, Michigan. Next stop, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Over there to Marquette. And then final in Duluth, Minnesota. Now, this was in the heart of winter. And Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota were under snow emergencies. They got like two or three feet of snow in a couple of days, like in the mid 90s. I fought my way up to Traverse City in the snow and over the Mackinac Bridge, which is a beautiful, beautiful part of the country, a gorgeous bridge. And I was told before you get to Sault Ste. Marie, you gotta call this phone number. The phone number is, is uh, the National Guard, which is stationed at the border of Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie is the farthest north point in Michigan, and it borders Canada. And I was told they're only letting emergency supplies in to Sault Ste. Marie. Otherwise, they weren't letting trucks into the city. It was there was so much snow. The snow was so high, it came up to my windowsill. So I call, I, I got to the border. I called the I called the number. I said I'm like five miles out of town. Um, I'm a truck driver. I have a delivery in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, well, we're only letting emergency supplies in. What do you have? I said I got a load of beer. We'll meet you at the border and give you an escort to the. Uh, distribution center. So, I was met by um, the army, basically. They gave me a full escort right to uh, where I had to deliver it to Sault Ste. Marie, delivered my beer. Then I had to cut across the top of Michigan, which I mean, nobody goes there, right? Unless you live up there. Right across the top to Marquette, through Wisconsin, Cross country to Duluth. Delivered my beer, and I don't remember where from there. I think I went from there to uh, the cities, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Picked up a load for California. And uh, man, that, that triggered me. When you're digging out old foundations, you find all kinds of treasures. Like, look at all these old bottles. How cool is that? Another one. I'd rather find some money, some coins. Look at these old bottles. Wow. What are these like old milk jugs? Magnesia, milk and magnesia. Chess H. Phillip Chemical Company. Glenbrook, Connecticut. Wow. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, I'm loaded. I gotta get out of here. Okay. Get out of here before I get run over. I only wear a safety vest on the protest, and I sure as hell don't drive with one on. Just an idiot, folks, making jokes. But seriously, I, would, I don't drive with a lawn. Right? I don't look good in safety green, that's what it is. Another person wrote, hello from Wheeling, West Virginia. I smile when I think about Wheeling, West Virginia. 
first of all, I was on my way to San Francisco, summertime. For some reason, I had many days to get there. I might have had five or six days to get there. Back in the day, you know, three or four days across country. But I, I, had, I think I got five days. And I used to hang out at the um, America's, America's Chrome and Truck Wash shop in Dallas Bike, West Virginia, right across from the TA, it's right by Wheeling. Carol Watson, she was the manager. She might have been the owner. Great woman, great woman. You go into this chrome shop, and truck wash, and they had a big driver's lounge, they had free showers. It was like a home away from home. Big screen TV back in the day, it was like, like 1997. Went there a lot, but she had a truck show. Down the bottom of the hill, there was a truck stop called Consolidated Truck Stop. Yeah, truck show over there every year. So in 97, I took my truck down there. I had my load going to San Francisco. I dropped it at the chrome shop in their lot. Bob tail to the bottom of the hill. Went to the truck show, truck show for a couple days. I got some pictures. I oh, only got some pictures. And um, after the truck show, hook up my trailer. Get on I-70, I start heading west towards California. I no sooner get to the bottom of the hill, into Wheeling, coming up to the tunnel, and I lost an injector. So, this is on a Sunday afternoon. And I called dispatch, about Maya, what do you want to do, blah, 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 do we, want, you know, we can't run it. You know, can't run out there like that. So we ended up, ended up going back to the chrome shop load was repowered by another driver. He left me his empty trailer. And we waited till Monday morning. Now in Wheeling, the only truck dealership was a white slash GMC truck dealership in Wheeling. So we made arrangements to, I bobtailed over there, left the truck. How many days is it going to be? Uh, it could be a couple days. We're going to get the parts. The injector didn't have it. Five days. Five days in wheeling. So, a uh, company got me a hotel in the Holiday Inn in Wheeling, West Virginia. It looks right over I-70 and the bridge is from a nice location. But, you know, wheeling is a... You know, back then it was, I don't know about now, but it was kind of like a throwback to the old days, like an old mining town. I did a lot of walking in town. Um, in a few bars, there was a, there was a strip joint there too. You yeah, know, I remember where it was. Went there, I just kind of hung out. And um, one, one, day, um, one day they rented me a white GMC tractor go deliver a load over to New Jersey. A guy brought a load in going to um, somewhere in New Jersey. So they rented me a tractor with a big bunk. One of those big white GMCs with a, it looked like a duck going down the road. A lot of room. To New Jersey, I came back and I still had a couple more days. So my buddy, Quinton from West Virginia, he drove for Bud Meyer, right? Him and I, you know, I met this guy. We were loading butter out of Issaquah, Washington, over by Seattle, going over to Kraft in New Orleans, Minnesota. And so we we trucked from Washington State to Minnesota one weekend. And uh, instant friends, like really, really, you know, that's how that's how it is when you're on the road. You, you know, you meet up with drivers, and when you run together, you know, a lot of times you become friends. I mean, you become friends for life. So, and we would make you make fun of each other you know he was he was from West Virginia I would do the whole you know hillbilly thing and you know do you guys even have electricity and he would make fun of you know being up in Boston and parking the car in the yard you know and he couldn't say my name he'd call me Mikey hey Mikey Mikey so um that week Quentin was home from the road he was like Mikey why don't you come on down here to Salt Rock and I come over to the house and spend the night and hang out with me and the family there, okay, buddy? 
I'm like, all right. So I rented a car. I drove from Wheeling over to Salt Rock. I think it's Salt Rock, which is on the Ohio border, west of Huntington, West Virginia, in the back in the back country. So I drive down there. It's, I don't know, it was like two, three hundred miles. I get over there, and uh, every stereotype of a hillbilly that I used to make fun of him and when we were, when we were busting each other's uh, chops was actually true. Like he lived, like I was making fun of him and I didn't realize I was actually talking about his real life. You know, he lived in a tar paper, tar, tar paper shack uh, trailer house on top of a hill looking over a creek, a creek in a holler. Quinton, what's a holler? Well, it's, it's, you know, see my folks live down there in that trailer? We just holler at them when we're coming when it's time for dinner. Hey, y'all! Hey, folks, come on up there! That's why they call it a holler. And, uh, when I arrived, I was attacked by bugs. They were all over me. And, uh, none were on him. And I was like, why am I being attacked by these giant bugs? Oh, they smell that Yankee blood on you there, Mikey. So we, uh, you know, I hung out there at the holler. In the in the shack, you know, with his family, great family, great people. Um, it was a whole, it's a whole other life that I am not used to. Like at nighttime, at nighttime, this is talking like July, right? They get all the doors and windows open, and the lights are all on in the house. And what happens in the summertime when you get all the lights on in the house, and the doors and windows are open? All the bugs come in the house. There's like bugs coming in the house, and I, I was like, I'm a city boy, I don't I don't like this, but I didn't say anything. And it was time to go to bed. I was gonna sleep on the couch. <laughs> Just a couple bugs were crawling on me, and I go, you know, I, I can't do this, I can't do this. And I go, I, I you know what? I'm not really tired. I'm, gonna, I'm driving back to Wheeling tonight. I just can't sleep, and then I left. And uh, I felt bad. They don't. They don't know why I left. I just. I just couldn't. I was just out of my comfort zone. And uh, once. And then Quentin got off the road within that year. And when I was coming through town, I'd say, uh, "Hey, you want to meet up for dinner?" Sure, Mikey. Yeah, I'll meet you. It was like a Italian place. It's like Italian fast food. It used to be in the service plazas across the country. It began with a P. I can't remember what it's called. And uh, like. Yeah, you mind if I bring the family? No, bring your family. And, uh, because I was buying dinner. I, somehow it was known that I was buying dinner. So he'd bring his whole family, because I was buying, you know, the kids, the wife. You know. And that uh, was a good time, you know. I miss that guy. That's a cool dude. He got off the road. His wife died a year or two later. I don't remember what, this, what the circumstances were. And, uh, yeah. Still in contact with him on Facebook. The kids are growing up now, but yeah, I love I love when people say where they're from because it just my memory is not so great sometimes, and uh, it just triggers triggers me. So keep uh, keep writing where you're from. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed that story. <laughs> Stories from the road. Good times. Made a lot of friends. A lot of friends for life. arrived at the pit. I dump out this load of unscreened loom. I'm gonna call dispatch and see what is next. I'm gonna haul some more material and we're gonna go get the low bed. I was thinking about it on the way over there. I think the last time I pulled the low bed, I moved that green auto car dump truck. I think that's the last time, which is probably a year ago. I ended up selling that auto car about a month ago. Sold it. Didn't, didn't do anything with it. Trailer, there's only one. I like to hook 
them up first. Then they have a system. I wish to tell you that. My dad always said, you gotta have a system, kid. We're ready to rock and roll. We got signal light action, we got marker light action. Comes the big boss. There the old girl sits. Whew, haven't seen this in about three years. Butterfly hood. Right, right here, guys. Look at right there. Goes right, in, right, right in there, Isaac. Right in here? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I'll just swap buckets with the six wheel. Yeah, we'll do something like that. No, nothing. All right, all right. Nope, nothing. All right, yeah. make sure it's all the way to the right. Yeah, I think. I don't want to force it. Yeah, it's all the way to the right. Yeah. Oh, no, Mickey, right. they fucking... Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Okay. Um, push that button again. I don't hear any clicks or anything. Wait, um, wait, wait. What's that? What was that? It's coming in on the other side of the starter here. Ah, okay. Shut the key off. Okay. Um, Isaac. What? Uh. Where's the air tank on this thing? Is there, is there a way to pump air into it? Uh, Down on that side, is that a, any kind of a quick disconnect on that? See that brass fitting right there? Is there uh, any kind I'm of up, a quick... Up there, up, like on yeah, the side there? On the, on the top side. You might have, you might have to get your, get your ass right underneath there and look. Oh, Isaac, right there. That's a, that's a quick connect, right? Are you talking here? No, no, bottom. Here. Right. Uh, it's a weird one. It's like a. Have you got anything like that in your truck? No, I don't have anything like that. Alrighty. Which one looks like it's in better shape? <laughs> the back ones. I don't need these glasses. I'm just going to put them on for sure. Just for the video. You got one, Isaac? How much air you want to put in it? Fill it up. Fill it up. We tried jumping it, putting air to the air tank. Now we're gonna go to plan B. So Tony, what's plan B? Well, we'll put, we got it spinning, so that's good. We just don't have enough power to keep the 
engine churner once the compression release is in. Okay. So I think if we put two trucks on it, we might have enough juice. Right. You gotta, you gotta get them close enough yep. so we can, but the jump is a real long. We'll get, you get them close enough, we can put Okay. Put them on. We want, to, we want to be able to yep. walk by. Yep. I like it. Right in the middle.
nice and straight. Go that way a little bit. Straight, straight. Good, good. It's good right there, Tony. So what do you think, Tony? You happy? Couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier? See, I think so. We had to give her a little ether. A little bit of ether, we had right? To give her a little bit of ether to start. Ether's the magic but elixir. We fix a couple leaks. We'll put all new batteries in it. And uh, take it to truck shows. The, I'll see you at the shows with the truck. Uh, listen, the first Kimball's ice cream. It's gonna be the first truck show up at Kimball's ice cream. Absolutely. See what they see what they say. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Hold on. All right. Yeah, let's wanna, go. You want to do it? What do you want to do it? Just back it off. Oh, you mean talk about the truck? Yeah. While we're walking. So, you got the truck from Framingham. Framingham, uh, New England sand and gravel. He wanted to get twin screws. Frank Generacio. Yep. That was the owner. Uh, these, he had two of these. He had sisters, oh, whatever. And he had them hooked up to the old fru hop dumps. Yep. And their job was to bring sand from the pit to the concrete plant. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. Whatever laws came in or whatever. They, they must have been getting on his case, so he ended up he, gonna get rid of these, and he got screws. He was uh, he was a king of auto cars. I think that's all he had. Okay. That old auto car mixes and all that stuff. We heard about it. We were running an old GMC, and we heard about him. We went up there. The other truck had been sold. This was being saved for a friend of the mechanic, and I told Frank, I said, you know, if you ever if something happens, let me know. About a week or so later, he's the guy backed out of the deal. Come on up. We went up and bought it. That must have been, just must have been in the 80s, early 80s. I have to find out. And did you run the truck as a working truck? Yeah, that truck. At, at that time, we stuck stuck it on the low bed and we kept the gooseneck on it. Okay. Gooseneck was on it all the time. It was parked inside the garage. Okay. And it just went back and forth. Then. We did the same thing. Um, it was during the big dig. I bought a R600, um, 306 speed, and we put a dump body on that. Guy came along from Framingham and wanted it. He was an electrician. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to fool around with it. So we, he bought it, and I don't know what happened to him, but the head of the DPW for Truro Mass ended up buying it okay took the body off it and that's what he what you see is what he did to it okay then he bought a single axle um dump trailer yep found it in new hampshire it's parked at the pit parked at the pit all right so we need he to get this that. thing back to glory so <laughs> white hood somebody, pinstriping come on somebody told me yep. that they had seen the truck at a truck show mm -hmm. and um Friend of mine, Mikey Francis. Yep. Took that VIN plate uh -huh. and he had it bronzed or gold or whatever. And I never put it on the truck. Yeah. I just forgot about it. And when I somehow I got in touch with this guy, somebody knew him, and I told him, I said, I got the I got the plate. Okay. The guy says, uh, what do you want, Fred? I said, No, I don't want anything for it. It's yours. It belongs yep. on the truck. I gave it to him, thanked me. I says, if you ever wanted, I was always sad that I got rid of it. Yeah. You ever want to do anything, give me first shots at it. A couple years later, the guy called and says, I'm ready to sell it. We made a deal, I bought it, and he brought it back. He drove it here. From I remember, Toronto. I was here. Remember? I was you here, here, yeah. Left it in the, left it in the Shaw's parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Left it in the Shaw's parking lot. And the rest is history. Yeah. And then, uh, you know the best part? Is I'm gonna be able to. I'll put you in the passenger seat, uh -huh. and it'll be like 
dad and son. Come on yeah. now, uh, shift that right okay, there. Okay, dad. You know who's good on us? Yeah. Can I Shorty just, Ulo. Can I just sit on your lap? I don't know if I'm Shorty, sit on yeah. my lap. <laughs> Shorty Ulo. He, he shift these in his sleep. I bet he could. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. All right, let's get her we off We don't here. know if it's going to start. Because we had to jump start it. Let's see if we get lucky. Wow. I think it was a little easier for me to climb into when I was a little younger. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, it sounds good, Mike. What was that? It doesn't sound that good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just push her, we'll just push her off. When we need air. Hey, Go ahead. I was just going to put it right in front of that door. Oh, okay. Okay. the video where I say goodbye but don't go anywhere yet I have a few announcements number one I already forgot what number one is oh I thank you for spending your time with me I appreciate it please tell a friend share my videos on social media it helps me out helps me make great content don't ask me why it just does like share comment number two oh it's Friday I have tomorrow off unfortunately I have to drive to Brooklyn New York tomorrow morning for a funeral, a c cousin of my wife. Sucks, but you might see me in New York City tomorrow. I'll be back Sunday. Number three, Louisville next week. Big announcement on my end. I can't say what it is, but it's huge. Um, you'll have to check back with me. Number two, come by the show with Teller booth. It's gonna be crazy. We're gonna have uh, some other influences there, I guess. Am I guess am I an, am I an influencer? Do I influence influence you to do anything? I don't know. I don't know about that word, but uh, trucking with Tay, um, Farmer Grace, she's gonna be there. Adam Kester from Kester Racing. We're gonna have a, a Super Rigs truck 
in the booth. That was a winner from last year, 2005 379P to built. Owned by Texas, uh, Texas Express, right? Equipment Express out of Texas. Check that out. It's gonna be a badass ride. Oops, can't say ass on the radio. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm um, looking forward to uh, meeting anybody who comes up and says to me, says hello to me. Let's take a picture together. Let's chat. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Truck stayed pretty clean this week. Wasn't too bad. I don't even think it rained. A little bit of rain this morning, but the roads were dry. It's amazing. Louisville looks like it might be a little wet next week, but it's going to be in the 60s, so it'll be better than last year. Last year was cold. And that's it. Peace and grease. Boston Trucker with you. I appreciate all of you, every single one of you. Thanks for reaching out, sharing the love of trucking with me. I'm dragging this out. Why am I dragging it? I don't know. Have a good weekend, Boston Trucker. We'll see you next week in Louisville. All right, peace.